Hi everyone, welcome back. We're doing another linear approximation problem today. This one, our function looks like this. f of x, y equals e to the x squared minus y to the fourth. This whole thing here is part of the exponent. At the point, 1, negative 1. Okay, so the instructions for this problem are actually find the equation of the tangent plane to the graph of this at this point. Um, the formula that I always like to use for linear approximation problems is one that I think is much simpler than the one that's often given in calculus textbooks. It's the same thing, it just looks less terrifying. So Let's go ahead and write it up here. Z minus Z1 equals A times X minus X1 plus B times Y minus Y1. This is the equation I always use for linear approximation form, uh, problems. You're welcome to use it. Um, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we want to do always with linear approximation problems is plug in the point 1, negative 1 to the original function. So we'll have f of 1, negative 1 equals e, okay, and then remember this is x and y. So we're plugging in 1 for x, so this will be 1 squared minus negative 1 uh, to the fourth. So before Actually, before I go forward, um, let me just kind of go over what we're going to do in the problem. Like I said, the first thing we're going to do is plug in the point to the original function. That is going to allow us to solve for z1. Then we are going to take partial derivatives with respect to x and y and plug in the point to solve for a and b. And then we're going to take the values in the point and plug them in for x1 and y1 and then simplify the equation. So that gives you an idea of where we're going. So anyway, let's, let's keep moving. We plugged in the point to the original function. We're going to end up with, let's see, e, 1 squared is 1, so to the 1. Negative 1 to the 4th is actually going to be a positive 1. So we'll have minus, which comes from here, and then just another positive 1, which is going to be e to the 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything raised to the 0 power, doesn't matter what it is, is 1. So e to the 0 is 1. Um, when we plugged in the point up here to the original function, we were solving for z1. So z1 here is going to be 1. I'm going to go ahead and write that down so we can erase the rest of this and um, still remember what, uh, what we solved for. So z1. So the next thing we're going to want to do, uh, we can go ahead actually, you can see we have z, x, and y, which are our, like, regular variables, and then we have z1, x1, and y1. z, x, and y, we're going to leave in the equation as they are. We need to plug something in for z1, x1, and y1. So we just found z1 by plugging in the point to the original function. x1 comes directly from the point, it's 1, and y1 comes directly from the point, negative 1. So we've got those three things. I said we were going to leave y, x, and z as they are, so the only two things we need to solve for now are a and b. The way that we do that, we take the partial derivative, partial derivatives with respect to x and with respect to y. Um, this is going to be for a and this is going to be for b. Also called slope in the x direction and slope in the y direction. So let's go ahead and take the partial derivatives. And I said in a previous video, if you uh, are having trouble with partial derivatives, please go to that section of the website and check out the partial derivative videos that I have there. I'm going to kind of breeze through partial derivatives here because um, this section is about linear approximation. So we're going to go ahead and take the partial derivative with respect to x. So... Um, Whenever we're taking the derivative with when e is involved, remember we learned um, when we first started learning basic derivatives 
the derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x. It doesn't change at all. So likewise, this derivative won't change at all. It's going to be e to the x squared minus y to the fourth. So that stays exactly the same. However, x squared minus y to the fourth is way more complicated than simply x, so we can't just leave it. If it were e to the x, yes, it would just stay the same, e to the x. But since this is way more complicated, we need to apply chain rule. And the way that we do that is by multiplying by the derivative of the exponent here. So e to the x squared minus y to the fourth. Now we multiply by the derivative of um, x squared minus y to the fourth. But of course, since this is a partial derivative, we're multiplying uh, or, or we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of this exponent here with respect to x, the y to the fourth is going to go away because there's no x's involved at all, and we're just going to be left with the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So we multiply by 2x. Um, let's actually go ahead and erase this because I'm going to need more room. So that ends up being um, that ends up being 2x times e to the x squared minus y to the 4. And while we've got that up, let's go ahead and, um, and solve for a. So the way that we do that, of course, is plug in the point again. So two, we're plugging in 1 for x and negative 1 for y. So we've got 2 times 1, e to the 1 squared minus negative 1 to the 4 equals 2e, and remember we did this before, but let's just go through it again. 1 squared is just 1, negative 1 to the 4th is 1, so we have a minus 1, so we get 2e to the 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1, 2 times 1 is 2. So the partial derivative with respect to x at the point 1, negative 1 is 2. So we solved for a and we got 2. So now we have to do the same thing with respect to y.